welcome to uh, the uh, Hampton Municipal Budget Committee on July 7, 18, 2018. I call this meeting to order. If you stand and pledge allegiance to the Republic with me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Each member would introduce themselves, starting with Mr. LeBranch. Steve LeBranch. Bob Land, representing the Village District. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen representative. Brian Warburton. Mike Bluff. I am uh, Chairman Jones. Frank DeLuca, representative of the School Board. Brian Wappum. Okay, uh, we have sufficient quorum, so uh, this meeting is called to order. And the first thing on our agenda is old business. Uh, we do have old business, a uh, few items, but I'm not going to discuss them. If anyone has any old business, uh, hopefully it can wait until a subsequent meeting. I want this meeting to be largely dedicating our time to the Warren article. So, anybody have any old business? No? Thank you. Okay, the proposed special town meeting Warren article. Um, you all have a copy of it. And I'll just give you some background. Uh, we're having a special town meeting on uh, the voting is actually on August 24th, as I understand it. Uh, the delivery session, session one of town meeting, is on August 6th at 7 p.m. in this room. Uh, this Warren article that we all have in front of us cannot be changed by us. What we can do is we can discuss it. Uh, we'll vote on it. Our vote tallies will be placed as part of the ballot on this warrant for the voters to consider. But we cannot make any changes whatsoever to this warrant article. It's standard policy, even on a non-special meeting. However, the voters can make some amendments or propose them at session one <coughs> on August 6th. And that would include any of you guys that wish to do so. But I would also caution you that there are limitations on what amendments can be entertained at that meeting. We will be having a public hearing to listen to the public on this very Warren article in two weeks from tonight. So, this is a special town meeting. Uh, we came about with a special, special process by having the uh, state of New Hampshire legislative body and the governor sign a special law to enable the town of Hampton to have this special election. Right, Fred? Correct. And in that legislation, the town of Hampton is allowed to have a special town meeting on or before August 31st um, only for the purpose of considering you know, replacing the beach sewer pipes uh, with a bond. So, Mr. Walburton, the discussion you and I had at the last meeting, so wonderfully interesting about you know how much of the unsigned fund balance should be used, is moot. I was very glad last night watching the, the manager explain that. And oh, did he explain that? Yes, it's oh. going to be SRF funding, and it's going to be you know the regular sixty percent vote. And uh, Fred did a great job of explaining we're not going to take anything out of the unassigned fund balance. And that, I that's think, what this Warren article says. Right, but I think uh, it's terrific. It cannot even be amended at right. the delivery okay. session because the special legislation that was passed would not allow that. Yes, correct. So uh, there's there's not a whole lot of point in even talking about it. No. Yep. Okay, so I just wanted to highlight that. And uh, this Warren article is essentially uh, $5 million to pay for both the emergency pipe that is currently being constructed in its final stages of construction, as well as the replacement of two pipes into a slightly new location so it will no longer be buried in the marshland, as well as the closure of the existing two pipes. Um, the $5 million is actually technically $4,937,868. It's uh, for a bond not to exceed 30 years, and uh, that's the essence of it. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Mr. LeBranch. Um, I read in the newspaper article that Max Sullivan wrote about last night's meeting that the temporary pipe costs $60,000 to install, and, and that it cost, I think, 11500 a week. Is that correct, Fred? No. Okay, good. Oh, <laughs> you know, I 
Don't don't believe everything you read in the newspaper. Oh, I wouldn't want the facts to get in the way of a good story. I understand. You know? I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, when I read that, I thought, gee, that doesn't sound like no. what we were told before. Uh, I believe it's approximately seventy thousand dollars to put the pipe in. I don't have the exact figure with me, yeah. and it is eleven thousand five hundred dollars a week okay. in order to uh, rent that pipe. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't quite finished yet. There's uh, some braces that go around the pipe at various locations to potentially keep it from moving when it's under pressure. Uh, there's also a what they call a saddle device, which goes at the beginning of the pipe, and that allows access through a controlled hatch so that we can get into the pipe and, and either put air in it or, or clean the pipe out. Now, when does the rent part of that Oh, it's already started. <laughs> Oh, so it isn't when it's finished. Oh, no. It it, it no, no, it started the day we started the process. Okay. I just thought I'd ask because that was something I thought about at home. Thank you very much. That's all I have for now, Mr. Okay. Chair. Anybody else? No. Mr. Ladd. Do you have an estimate? Assuming the bond is approved, the mm -hmm. warrant article, right. how long will it take to put in the new pipe? It depends upon the availability of the pipe. The pipe has to be made. It's a special pipe. Um, they're talking anywhere up until sometime in late October before it will become available to us. Could be earlier than that. It depends upon the unit runs. Uh, it's a, a special type of pipe, so it's, it's, it's very difficult to get. It's not a standard type pipe. It's an 18-inch pipe, and that's what we have in there now for the temporary. Uh, that will provide us enough for the, the future for the next 50 years in addition to the loads we're handling now. And after you get the pipe, assuming it comes sometime in October, how long will it take to install it? It will be in by the spring. We're hoping to do it before the beginning of the summer season. But that depends on a whole number of different things. And that pipe will be underground or above ground? It'll be underground, except where it crosses uh, the brook, Bridge. the creek. That will go across a special bridge that has to be built. Mm -hmm. okay. Could you explain a little bit why it's taken so long for the temporary pipe to be installed? Well, weather was one factor. They can't work uh, when it rains, and it, it rained on several days when we were installing the pipe. Um, the heat is not a good factor, uh, and these people were trying to work in 100-plus degree weather. Uh, they had to take frequent breaks because they're working out in the direct sunshine. sunshine. Uh, and that's basically the reason. It takes quite a while. Each section of this pipe has to be welded together. And then it has to be trimmed and cleaned and, and, and uh, tested so that we know it's capable of holding a load. Uh, when we did finally get the entire pipe put together, they did test it, uh, and it did not hold. There were three leaks. So they had to go back and do those three sections over again. In the temporary pipe, be okay where it is for the winter? Yes, it will. No more questions. Um, I just have a couple questions. Bob, so we've determined that, because I know there was some confusion, it's 11500 a week? A week. Okay, so it's... Not a month, a week. Okay. All right. And we started paying that already? Yes. And we thought that it was ready to go, and we started it, but it had leaks in it. We filled the pipe with water for a test and put it under pressure, and it sprung two leaks. Obviously, the reason we do that is so we can find out if it's, if it's whole. Right. Um, we then emptied the pipe of the water, and we compressed, we compressed it with air. We could only put two and a half pounds pressure on the inside of the pipe uh, okay. with compressed air because it will break a seam if it's more than that. Running water through it is, is a completely different story. Okay, and if we get, once that, the temporary pipe is up and ready to go, are we gonna be using that pipe for most of the flow or are we just gonna keep it as it is It right depends now? upon the flow velocity and the, 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 the amount of flow there is. Okay. Uh, we have not had major storms so far right. uh, since the, the other pipe failed. Uh, right now, if you look at last year's uh, flows per day. Uh, we are running 3,500,000 to 4 million gallons a day. We're currently running 2,500,000 gallons mm -hmm. to 3 million gallons okay. a day. I think we've had one day where it actually got to 3 million gallons so far this summer. 
Uh, that's very good. Of course, we've had no major storms. And as you know, we have a lot of I and I infiltration from the storm water when right. the, uh, the, the ocean comes up and we have severe storms. We haven't had that. When that comes about, we're going to be using the full capacity of this pipe plus the full capacity of the other pipe. We don't want to tax the other pipe beyond a certain right. point because it's not new. It's actually uh, the older of the two. It's the older of the yeah. two. Uh, however, it's different type of construction. It's asbestos concrete, and it's sitting on telephone poles that were embedded in the marsh. So the pipe does not flex as much. Oh, okay. It doesn't have as much flexibility to it. So it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy. Uh, as long as it stays seated, uh, chances are that it won't have a high vibration like the previous pipe that failed did. Okay. Great. And I just wanted to say one thing about how this special war article came about. I just think that it's proof how awesome the state of New Hampshire can be with our legislators and our state senators when they get together with the municipalities and figure out what the problems are and sort of, you know, you know, this is, we all want the same thing. We all want these pipes replaced. The entire state, in my opinion, needs these pipes replaced. And I just thought the process went really smoothly. And I like to thank everyone involved, especially our state senator, who was the one that was responsible for introducing this bill to the state senate. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Welch, so good to uh, be back with you again. And I, I just want to have a comment and a question, but I want to echo what Regina said, because for the public to know at home, when I managed state parks in the seacoast, we didn't have zero problems. And so I watch all this stuff going on now. Working with Mr. Welch was a pleasure, and we really had huh, Fred. There, we there had some was, fun. But we, yeah. we got it done, and we didn't have to call Concord all the time. But anyway, that being said, uh, I want to commend you, Fred, and, and also Chris Jacobs and Jennifer Hale and the entire team. This has not been an easy situation. But I have to tell you that everyone I talk to, I mean, when I say everyone, I mean everyone, is for this being done. And I, I commend the work that it, this is, I'm sure the hours you put in to get it done it was immense. Very well explained. I only had one question, and correct me if I misunderstood something. You, somebody said earlier the temporary pipe. I thought when we spoke about it a couple months ago that it could not be used in the winter due to the weather elements. You said it's going to be. It can be used in the winter time. Uh, the pipe is not insulated. Okay. Uh, once we start to use it, we will use it on a regular basis. It may not be maximum flow, uh, but that will keep it from freezing. And once the snow comes, the snow is going to be piled on it by the state snow plows. That's going to insulate it, <laughs> yeah. something terrible. And yeah, that nice absolutely. hot sewage going right. through it is going to keep it nice and dry. Thank you. It's all I have. And, again, excellent, Mr. Welch. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Um, before we get to the article, are we going to have any final numbers on the temporary Fix. When uh, explain what you mean by the temporary fix, you mean the the cost that we yes. had to go through to repair the pipe that's no longer being used. Right. Uh, I believe we already have those numbers. It's it's well over a hundred thousand dollars every fix. Uh, we're on the third mm -hmm. fixed, and we're not doing it. Okay. We're just not going to fix it uh, because they've come back with a diagnosis that the pipe is beyond saving. <coughs> it's so <coughs> brittle. Uh, give you an idea. It's so brittle, the, the last break that they had that they fixed, um, they actually brought some of the pi pieces of pipe in. You could just snap them in two with your hands. No okay. problem at all. But the pipe completely gone. Okay. And what will happen to the pipe when we get, hopefully, the article passes and we move along? It's going to be flushed. Yeah. And it's going to be plugged. To try to remove that will cause more damage to the environment than anything else. There are actually four pipes out in the marsh. Mm -hmm. There are two original pipes out there, which were six or, six or eight inch pipes. They've been there for Lord knows how long, much longer than the pipes that are there now that are being used. Uh, and then they were replaced by the, the, the pipe that's broken plus the current pipe that's still working. Uh, and that was back in the early uh, mid-60s. Um, so those pipes are still there. They're plugged. They were, they were backwashed and cleaned out mm -hmm. so they wouldn't pollute anything. Uh, you do that as best you can. When you look at the pipes that are there now, you have to understand that they're laid like a snake. 
because we have four main channels that go down through the marsh. And in each of those channels, that pipe submerges, goes underneath the channel, and comes back up again. Uh, the net result of that is that material accumulates at the bottom. If we were to pull those pipes out, that material would pollute the marsh. It would be all over the place. You're point. just not going to get that material out of there. What's the cost of the town of plugging up the temporary pipe? Plugging it up? Well, the one that's there now that you're going to replace it with? The the pipe that's broken? Yeah. Well, that's just a matter of flushing it with water. Okay. And then putting a plug on either end. Right. Okay. We're not going to excavate it. That's that's what you're oh, concerned. Right. Yeah, we're not going to dig it up because it's just, it would be a hazard to the environment to do that, in our opinion. Okay. Thank you I, I have a question. Okay. Uh, question I have is if you're going to flush the pipe, mm -hmm. okay, and then plug it at both ends. Right. All right. You just indicated that the pipe is brittle and it will break in your hands, quote unquote. Okay. What is to prevent that pipe from breaking in the marsh and then we're going to have to look at taking it out or doing whatever? If you take that pipe out, you're talking eight to ten million dollars. No, no, I understand that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if it breaks. It's already broken. Okay. So I mean, we're not repairing that third, that third section. We're going to clean what we can and, and flush that into the new sewer line. Okay. And then handle that through the pumping station and pump it away. Uh, it, by gravity, it'll feed 200 gallons per minute. So if there's material in there, we slowly feed water into it. It will drain it out. Yeah. We're not going to do this under high pressure. Is there any indication that the pipe may disintegrate over time? It probably will. Will that have an impact on the environment? I can't tell you. I don't know. It depends on what's in it. If, we, if we're successful in cleaning the, the sewage out of it, then the material that's in there uh, is by and large stone and, and, and sand. The material that's adhered to the stone and sand and so on and so forth. The problem is we can't see what's at the bottom of each of the dips. Those probably will just stay there and do nothing. They're pretty. They're that, they're down in clay. They're yeah. probably never going to go anywhere. And they probably won't. If they do deteriorate, they'll be encapsulated. Okay. And I, the, the the six inch pipes are the same way. They're probably encapsulated now too. When we dug this up, it was deep in clay. So that's probably what kept the the, uh, uh, the breaks from becoming visible right. to us in the first place. Uh, the hole that was in the first break that was out there was, was the size of a large basketball. Uh, and, and that's been there a long time. So it, it wasn't really leaking hard until something happened and that stone moved for some reason, uh, whether it be vibration of the pipe, which did vibrate when the pumps went on. Uh, and then materials started coming out and, and we saw the result of that. But I suspect that that's been that way for a lot of years. Thank you. Okay. I wanted to ask one thing, Mr. Chair, um, the, the potential tax impact for our, the bond that we're talking about. Well, if we go with a regular bond from the bond bank, mm -hmm. which we're not going to do, uh, our, the, the estimate we received was the total cost, including interest, was $7.915 million. That's the that's the the bond itself plus the interest on the bond, and the interest rate was uh, three point eight six percent, which is fairly high. Um, the valuation impact to the town is point zero nine nine cents per thousand, so it's nine point nine cents per thousand, and that's all based on thirty years. So this is all supposition because we don't really have the bond yet. The SRF funding. Um, with the bond interest, same period of time, was 6.4 million. That's down from 7.9 million, and uh, the impact on that is 0 0.75 cents per thousand dollars of valuation, uh, and it's a 2.424 percent rate oh, of interest. Excellent. That's great. Thank you very much. Mr. What was the per thousand number again for on the SRF? Uh, the SRF is 0 0.75. That's 75 cents per thousand? No, no. 7.5 7 7 cents per thousand. 7.5 7 cents. 7 7 cents per thousand. Thank you. I'd be having a heart attack if it was 75 cents a thousand. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you.
Can you convert the seven and a half cents into a dollar a month for the average assessed value of property? We haven't. Three hundred thousand. We haven't gotten that far yet. Well, we can do that with a calculator. Well, it's four hundred thousand, yeah. right? Any other questions? Comments. Six point four million. Well, is, Regina does her yeah. calculator. No, no, I, I see where you're going. Yeah, yeah. you got it. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, Mr. Chairman, and you and I have talked about this, I think this is wonderful. We've got to make sure to get the public out to vote in the affirmative on August 24th. It's summertime. We need 60 percent. We need three-fifths. I know with Regina with her great communications uh, that all the stuff she does and others with the manager's office, I know we'll be getting that word out. It's important for oh, yeah. people absolutely to come out and vote for this from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Morrison School on August 24th. I think that's the biggest thing we'll be working in getting that word out. Is there a contingency plan in case you don't get the 60 percent? We need the appropriation. Yeah, if we don't get the 60 percent, this work doesn't get done. I'm pretty sure if that happens, mm -hmm. we'll receive a state order the next day. Right. And, yeah. and it'll just go one. It can either either they can help by spreading it across the number of bonding periods, or they can put it on the tax rate in one shot. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to do that. The state doesn't want to do <laughs> it either. Higher rate. Um, they're interested in getting this done. As, and in fact, they're going out of their way to give us the SRF. We're not even on the list. So That's correct. I, did I understand that you say that if we don't pass this, the state is going to? No. I said the state could. <laughs> could okay. Could. So I understand what you're saying is the state could uh, force uh, us to pay immediately for it. Well, the state has options. They give you an order, okay, and you have to obey the order. The order is outside the tax rate setting. Um, they have choices. They can hire the contractor themselves and have the work done themselves and not wait for the town to participate. So far, we've been working quite, quite well together on this, so I'm assuming we would continue to do that. Uh, the problem is that they're not out looking for bids. They're just out looking to get it done. No, they're particularly sensitive to the cost, right? At that point, is not particularly that because they're not paying for it. Yeah, is, that, is it going to take that kind of draconian approach? They're going to be pretty insensitive to the cost. No? I don't think so. I think they are pretty sensitive to what's going on here. They've been they've been working with us very hard to get these costs down, to get everything in managed order, to work with yeah, the Army Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. and the Environmental Protection Agency to get this all done. Mm -hmm. And they've been cutting a lot of corners for us. They've been doing an awful lot of work, uh, and the result of that is the the good prices that we have, and the fact that we have all of our permits in order to do this work. The um, additional alternative would be to go to the March with yet another warrant article of a similar nature, right? They, you, might, they might afford that possibility it could. as well. We'll probably so, be, uh, right now, we're, we're looking at from 800000 to a million dollars extra over the previous warrant article we put yeah, in. Yeah. It probably will be another million dollars higher. Sure. Well, there's another factor in there, too, is that the interest rates are climbing at this stage. So we're going to see an uh, uh, you know, inc incremental increase in interest rates, I believe. Well, we, we will. Delay this. Eventually, these pipes yeah. are going to have to be replaced. This year, next year, two years from now, whatever it is, it's going to have to happen. Well, let me, the interest rates will be higher the by interest, all expectations. interest rate will be higher. Yeah. We may not be eligible for SRF loans at that point. The state mm -hmm. may not offer that money to us. Um, you, you, you really take a gamble if you do that because now we're down to an emergency pipe. And that's all it is, is an emergency pipe, mm -hmm. okay, and, and, a, and a regular pipe. If something happens to that regular pipe that goes back to the mid-60s. We're going to need another emergency pipe. We're going to, we're going to be in very serious, well, we've got no place to put the second emergency pipe. That's the problem. Uh, we have a limited permit from the State Department of Transportation to put it where it is. Mm -hmm. We can't have two pipes there. We, we searched that. Um, you're in serious trouble if you're down to one pipe at some point in time because the load won't be handled if we have a major storm. We'll have sewage backing up into homes, onto streets. My biggest fear is that we would flood the pumping station and it would take us at least a year to replace all that equipment. Hmm. Then you'd have no beach and nothing down the beach for a year. That's just, those are options. We're not going to let that happen. It's just not going to happen. We're not going to permit it to happen. Well, the, the, the question I think Frank, Frank raised was, what if the voters don't approve it at 60% level required? Uh, what are the potentialities at that stage? Not that anyone's advocating that we try to bring any of those potentialities I, to fruition. I think we'll have an order from the state within a day or two. Yeah. I think the order's already written. Regina, your calculator's in? 
Yes, for a four hundred thousand dollar home at seven seven and a half cents for a thousand yep. three hundred dollars per year. Per year, and also as far as uh, what you and Fred, the town manager, are talking about, after we the pipe broke again, as a concerned selectman, the next day or the day after, I drove to DES, and I'll tell you right now, Fred's right. They had that order written, and Fred and Jamie and both former and current elected officials worked together and figured out that we all had the same problem we wanted to solve. And that is the reason that if they all got together behind the scenes, left the lawyers out, that is the reason why we did not get another order. So if the voters decide not to approve this, it's gonna eventually have to get done and it's gonna be more expensive and it should have been done in 17. So I'm positive we're gonna get the 60%, Plus, I think we're actually even going to have more people here now that are very interested because it's the summertime that are very interested in nothing happening to the beach or that pipe because it will affect the entire town. It will not just infect the beach. In my view, it will infect the entire state of New Hampshire. So people just need to get out and vote and say yes if they want to sustain this town. Thanks. I have one last comment. We're fighting time. The spells we're, we're talking in the end of the next year. Um, this is very important that we pass this and keep it moving because we are fighting time. This Thank you. Mr. Could LeBranch. I a, could I make a motion to recommend this foreign article? Yeah, we're, just, we're discussing it. We'll need one eventually, so you might as well make it now. That's why I'm doing okay. that. Motions, maybe somebody would like to second. Motion by Mr. Branch, second by Mr. Lapham to approve the warrant article before us. Uh, I would just to respond to you, Regina, that I think that the voters uh, should be encouraged uh, to vote not based on fear, but it's based on it making good sense for the town of Hampton. All right, and and you know the perceived potentiality of being threatened by the state and all this other stuff. Well, it may be real. I mean, we don't know what the future holds. But we do know what the present holds to the extent that we can know anything. And uh, these pipes are, are aged more or less at their maximum lifespan now, as it is. So they're going to have to replace soon. We've already experienced breakage. We see interest rates rising. The Federal Reserve is promising more incremental increases over the next period, and we're talking multiple uh, increases there. So our interest costs are going to go up higher. Construction material is likely to go up higher as well. I don't know how much of this material is coming from such places as China, where we may be looking at having to pay tariffs on top of this material. So I mean, we could be seeing you know, a skyrocketing of the construction costs in, in the near term as well. Um, so passing this now uh, has a lot of um, positive things to say, and I think getting the voters to act based on uh, what's good for Hampton is is actually better for everybody yeah. than having them vote in a, in a state of fear. And well, so I don't I don't want to I don't want to encourage I don't want to encourage. This is the third time this pipe has broke. I don't want to encourage. I understand, but that's it the point. Been is the age a million factor. dollars cheaper? It, but you know, I want to make sure that. It's a lot of different things going on. It's been ignored. It needs to be addressed. It's not fear. It's a fact. That's that's my view. I tell people what I think. This is why I'm doing this job. And I got to tell you, the feedback is very positive. People that were totally against it before are for it now. And it's not fear. I mean, like Fred said, no matter what, we're going to get through whatever happens. But we can make it a lot easier if we just vote it through now. The and state need to do. and the federal government has pulled out every stopper there is that's in our way to get this done. They're mm -hmm. very cooperative. They've been they've been spearheading this on their end. Uh, they're they're hopeful that this will pass, uh, and that's evidenced by the fact that they withdrew the attempt to serve another order on the town after mm -hmm. the last town meeting. Uh, we talked to them, and they said, "Yeah, we understand that's the wrong thing to do at this time. Let's all work together and get this done." And they've opened doors for us frankly, should not have been opened, but they were opened, and only because the State Department of Environmental Services um, and the governor's office 
opened those doors. It was very impressive when you could make one phone call, just one phone call, and all of a sudden a major State Department says, where do you want me to sign? Go. And the same with the Army Corps of Engineers and the EPA. They're all right behind us and they're all team teaming with us to get this done. So I think this is a good deal. We're getting a good deal from the state on the, on the interest rates and the amount of money we can borrow. Um, right now we're at our limit on the amount of money we can borrow without paying interest on it. So, you know, I mean, uh, SRF or uh, TAN, TAN loans are uh, usually two-tenths of a cent interest. We're now looking at two cents per, per dollar for interest uh, because we've already borrowed as much as the federal government will allow us to borrow. This is excluded. They've taken this off the list and they're providing the dollars. So I think it's a great deal for the taxpayers. It's something we're probably not going to see again because right now we're only eligible for 5% loans from the federal government on SRF funding. That's not what's happening here. <coughs> Would you say at the SRF percentage again, please? Uh, I thought I said 3.8. No, it's, no, it's 2.42 percent for for the interest rate on the SRF loan. That's a 30-year loan, I assume. That's a 30-year loan, That's right? Very great. Trying to get the cost down to where it doesn't grossly affect the taxpayers. Yeah. We have to wait to see and sit down the selectmen and the town treasurer have to sit down and talk to the state and look at the, the, uh, the charts and the interest rates that are given to us at the time this is actually booked. And this is the latest figure they've given us. This is the one they're, they're working with. I think this is the one that's going to be frozen. Uh, okay. Even if interest goes, it goes up, this one's not going to change. The other, the other thing, Mr. Wilbur. The other thing, Fred, that, you know, i got to commend you again. I was talking to Mike earlier. This SRF, it really excited me because those were the, you remember the days when we did a lot of stuff by SRF, and it's the best way to go. You mentioned in the meeting last evening, which I think got a lot of people excited too, and I was one of the ones that didn't want to hear about going to that unassigned fund balance, because you use a million dollars of that to offset the tax rate, mm -hmm. and the taxpayers like hearing that. So we've got, these are both win situations for our community, right. and I I couldn't agree with you more, and, and for them to come forth, meaning the state, with all, as Regina has pointed, with all the parties involved, th this to me is, you know, I used to use the expression, no brainer, and I, I think we got to get the uh, people out because the, excellent again all the way around. And you, you spoke about the options that we would have and presented this, and I, I just think it's a uh, wonderful solution. So thanks. Anybody else? Everyone have their say? Okay, now I'll have my say. Yes. Uninterrupted. 18 months ago, we had a Warren article for this, essentially the same work, which I supported publicly. And just before that election, when the vote was taken, as I recall, there were a number of news articles that came out, among which were veiled, if not outright, threats from the state uh, about what they might do if we don't pass it. And some percentage of the voters took umbrage with that, in my opinion, and voted no. Called their bluff, so to speak. I don't want the voters, I don't think it's good for Hampton's voters to look at it under the guise of such a threat. We should look at it simply as what's in the best interest of the town of Hampton, the town of Hampton citizens. And from my point of view, just as it was 18 months ago, it is still today, although arguably less so because interest is a little bit higher, but I think this is actually a better interest rate than we had 18 months ago. It was. It is. So we're actually, you know, kind of a, a benefit out of that, uh, accidentally speaking. So this is absolutely, uh, you know, uh, something that we need to get done. I mean, it's a matter of public safety. It's not just about business. It's about sanitation. It's about health. It's not just about pollution. It's about your health. And it's not just about the beach people only or the beach no. businesses only. The town-wide issue relative to sanitation. Uh, I don't think anyone, any of us wants to have outbreaks of, uh, of all the various uh, diseases that used to occur prior to public sa proper public sanitation. So, I mean, we're talking about a hell of a lot of people that died from, from it. Uh, so, I mean, this is one of the main services that, that local government or government provides to its people is sanitation. It's absolutely needed. Whether we need it this minute or the next minute, we need it very soon. 
in this warrant article is the vehicle to have it done. So I, I will favor this motion for those reasons, not based on fear or any other factors, but just the mere fact that it needs to get done. It's already been aged out. We had a great financial package. Although I would have liked to have been, have been able to talk about how we finance a little bit more. But that is, as I said earlier in the meeting, that is moot. The bottom line is we, we're going to vote on what we have in front of us, and what we have in front of us is good. So if anyone else has anything else to say, I would just... I just want to, okay. just to get the numbers once again. You said seven and a half cents per thousand? Yeah. It's uh, 0 0.75 cents per thousand. Per thousand. So right. on an average of a $400,000 home, you're looking at roughly about $30? Or you came up with 300 Yeah. It's 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 seven point five cents per times, thousand yes, dollars valuation. Four hundred times seven right. comes out to thirty dollars. Four hundred times seven point five. Yep. Yep. Point zero. Point zero. Zero. Oh, okay. So that's yeah, even better. You slipped it. Thirty. <laughs> yeah. Thirty. Mm -hmm. One thirty decimal bucks. point. One further over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just get right. the numbers right. So you know what? In the scheme Thank of things. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's thirty bucks. Yeah. You know what it is? It's a 30-pack of beer. There you go. You know. You could do that with a GoFundMe page. I had yeah. 30 in the beginning, and I was like... That's a good idea. That's no, it's not. Very good. Thank you very much. I'm glad that you mentioned that, $30. <laughs> That's kind of important because... Yeah, it is. It's extremely it's important. It's very important to yeah. people in this town. Mm -hmm. If you have a $400,000 yes. house, which is probably about... Average. About average. Maybe. Yeah. So you look so at, at $30. Between 30 yeah, and $50 for the yeah. year. I think it's that's not affordable. a great amount of money, okay, for really for safety mm -hmm. and peace of mind. Yeah. I think we can afford that. Thank you very I, much I for so. pointing that out. How much did the school renovation cost? Considerably more, right? Uh, the mm -hmm. school renovation was at 20 This is why I asked the question, because yeah. he's looking at five. I'm just rounding yeah. your number. Right. School renovation was at roughly twenty-four million, right. and that amounted to roughly about two hundred and fifty dollars. So that's where I also, came up. Yeah, yeah, I must have just yeah. not had yeah. the. So and, you and know those, what? And those same children, we would, didn't want to have in an unrenovated building, <laughs> will be exposed to sanitary problems uh, if we don't pass this. Uh, absolutely. So, absolutely. You know. so anybody yes. else? Thank you, Frank. That was very. Thank very you very helpful. much. Yes. Anybody else, Ms. Walburn? I am good. Okay. Uh, I, I will call for a vote. Ms. Branch. Yes? Yes. Ms. Ladd? Regina? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. Yes. yes. Unanimous. 8-0. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Welch. The next meeting uh, we will be having in two weeks from tonight, it will be the public hearing for the bond, you know, because we have to have a public hearing on bonds. So mm -hmm. two weeks from tonight, yep. in which the public will be invited to make comment. Uh, and encourage us to you know, change our votes if they feel we should. Where will that meeting be held? Right here. Yeah, yeah. All meetings for the Budget Committee are held here from okay. now on, including the January public hearing. It's all two, held here. Two weeks from tonight will be July 31st. That's right. correct. Okay. Yeah. The uh, Selectman's bond hearing will be held the night before. Right. <coughs> They're required to hold one. They too, have to so. have one, too. Yeah. And is the deliberative session 8-6? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you that now. Yes. The, uh, the session yes. one of town meeting, also known as the liberal session, yeah. uh, will be at 7 p.m. on August 6th, which is a Monday. That's correct. And that's at 7 p.m. in this room. Correct. Uh, it's at that time that anyone from the public can make motions to amend this warrant article if they so see it, keeping in mind there will be restrictions on, on the expansiveness of those motions, uh, which I'm not going to delineate here. Mm -hmm. Uh, the actual t town meeting session two, also known as election, uh, is actually Friday at the Madison School on August 24. Correct. The usual voting hours, which I believe are 7 a.m. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 8 p.m. at the Madison School, Friday, August 24. And um, that's yeah. the situation. Oh, by the way, the budget committee will be meeting, as I said, next, or two weeks from tonight, right here. Yeah. And then we will have another meeting after the close of session one on Monday, August 6th. Now, that meeting, I assume, will be fairly brief. I assume you have the same assumption in your mind, Fred? I would, I would assume so, yes. I would think so. Yeah. Much like this meeting has been fairly brief. In fact, it might even be briefer. 
<laughs> but in any case, that's the situation. So that for the next budget committee meetings, we then will go into our more or less normal cycle. I already posted that to you guys in email, uh, which will be in September. I do not anticipate, although we have scheduled room reservations in August, there's no way that I anticipate having an, a third Tuesday August meeting. Um, and with that, um, I would say that uh, does anyone have any new business? I'll make a motion to adjourn. So Second. We, so with that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you for. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome.